It is the second Sunday of the Advent season and we get this wonderful passage from the prophet Isaiah. The people are in exile, uh, they have been taken from their homes, they are living in a foreign land and Isaiah, as many of the prophets uh, do, gives them hope. And we get this wonderful uh, sort of Advent passage of waiting and expectation from Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah writes these words. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. And on that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to all the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him. His dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is a fascinating passage, and usually we Christians read it around Advent and we think about Christ. Uh, we think about the Advent time of moving towards Christ and expecting something amazing. And sure enough, this text gives us all those amazing images, uh, especially in like six through the end. It says, wolf and lamb will lie dead together, leopard and kid will be together, calf and lion. All of these things that are usually opposed to one another, or at least in danger of killing one another. Isaiah says, when this one comes, this is the way the world will look. That we won't find the violence of life, but rather they will rest together. They will lie down together. They will eat together. They will find peace. And what's so interesting, I think, about this is if we look at the world around us, we know that there's lots of division, that there's lots of... Um, violence. And yet in Isaiah's passage, as he speaks to a people in exile that have lost, lost battles, he says, look, this is a particular way to live in the world. And when we pay attention to what God is doing, we might just see that there are these moments where things that are opposed to one another end up coming together, or at least end up finding peace in some matter. I think that this isn't kind of uh, prescriptive, like uh, if you pay attention to God, then this, this is what will happen. I rather think that this is a more of, of a description of what it is like when Christ and the Spirit, because remember the text says the Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, when Christ is in our lives or when we are paying attention and anticipating and waiting and giving attention to God, it rather describes the things that we can see in our lives that we might not necessarily always see. A couple of weekends ago, 
as many of you probably know if you follow uh, United Methodist Church history, or at least what's happening with us as a denomination. Many churches now are disaffiliating. Um, uh, and in our conference here in North Carolina, there are churches that are disaffiliating. And, and I went to an annual conference session where we ratified that, where it was a kind of a session where those who wanted to disaffiliate were kind of granted the process to allow them to leave United Methodism. And it was such a, a, an interesting, or at least uh, I would say, uh, sad and it was just weird. It was a conference where you had some churches that wanted to leave for theological reasons, and churches that wanted to stay. And I ended up realizing when I was there that I had friends that all of a sudden I was sort of disaffiliated from or they were on that side and I was on this side and it became really sad and in that minute, in that time, there was always an opportunity for us to be at odds with one another. And I think still in the church, always from the beginning of time, there is always these opportunities for us to be at odds with one another, to hurt one another, to say things or to do things that are hurtful. And when I went to the annual conference, there were those on, you know, that I talked to that were just on a very different uh, plane or theological plane than my own self and we had different different differencing of opinions and we named that sadness our bishop bishop fairly named that sadness and many of us named it but there were these other moments that we sang together we would all stand no matter where we sat on this side or that side and we lifted our voices and we sang together. One of the songs that we sang, you probably know well, the first line goes like this. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. We all lifted our voice in that moment and there were other songs that we sang. And what was so interesting is all of that stuff that has divided us and continues to divide us, our voices were caught up in a sort of harmony of that even in the midst of that, it is well with our souls. And I think what Isaiah may be doing and saying to us Christians now as we sit in our pews, that there will always be an opportunity for us to look and perpetuate violence and perpetuate division and to see the world in that way or there'll be a way in which the Spirit of the Lord rests upon the people and we begin to see where the wolf and the lamb lie down together. We begin to see where the child plays with the wasp or where the lion will eat straw with the ox. I for one want to have that kind of vision. And just maybe that that is part of, if not what, Christ does when he comes into the world and into our own lives. It's to bring peace and not violence. That's the kingdom that we move towards during the Advent season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.